Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. The sun rises, the sun sets. The sun rises, the sun sets. Rhythms set up routines. We eat and drink. Little by little, we can get so used to routines that we take them for granted. We can get so used to the quest for food and drink that that becomes central in our lives. And so when Muslims arrest the usual routine and fast from sunup to sundown, that exerts a call to attention to all of us, not only to Muslims, but for me as a Catholic, for followers of other religious paths. And I think there's something very important here that's worth attending to. At the core of the Islamic faith, is the affirmation that God is the only reality we should worship. And that challenges me. It's directly out of the prophetic heritage of ancient Israel. And it calls me to stop and think, what do I worship functionally in my life? What do I make my God in ways that detract from the one true God? In fasting, Muslims both give honor to God. They recall the events that led to the Quran. They celebrate the night of power, which took place on some <coughs> evening during this month. And they also extend concern for others. The Second Vatican Council, the leaders of the Catholic Church expressed their respect for the Islamic tradition. And they singled out three practices of Muslims that resonate very deeply with the Catholic tradition, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And I like to think of those three together. We pray towards God, both Muslims, Catholics, followers of many, many other religious paths as well. We fast both in relationship to God and also in relationship to the needs of those who do not have enough to eat and drink, another theme that unites Muslims and Catholics. In the opening of the document on the church's relation to other religions, the fathers of the Second Vatican Council said something that seems rather shocking. It seems completely counterfactual. They say there is one community among nations, among peoples. And they're writing in 1965. It's the height of the Cold War. The council had opened at the very time that Pope John XXIII was passing messages between Nikita Khrushchev and John Kennedy with this huge crisis over the missiles in Cuba. They knew the world is rent into many, many different divisions. And yet they proclaim, we are one community. And on the one hand, that's a deep theological affirmation that we share with Muslims and again with many other traditions as well. We have a common origin in God and a common final destination in God. But it's also a challenge. If we are this community in relationship to God, then we should live that way. And so the leaders of the council pleaded with Muslims and Christians alike to forget the animosities of the past and work together. And this is what I've seen in practice with the members of Hizmet, the followers of Fethullah Gulen, around the world in various places where I've been welcomed and hosted. In one situation after another, they're reaching out, looking for what values we share, which are so much more important than the areas on which we differ, seeking to build up the human community. And so I'm delighted and honored to be here this evening. The witness of the Muslim community around the world is a profound challenge to me as a Catholic to reflect upon my own faith and to work in shaping this one community in which we all share.